Hey, Victoria, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Town Talk, where we hear from local community leaders and city leaders, such as this guy over here. We'll introduce him in a sec. But thanks for tuning in. And so I'm Ashley. I'm your co-host for the day. I'm the Director of Communications and Public Affairs for the City of Victoria, and I've got a special new co-host filling in today. I'm AJ Gonzalez. I'm actually uh, the digital media specialist here, and so I'm glad to be here. Uh, I'm going to have some fun. Yes, yeah. we're going to have some fun. Tell us why, Ken Gill. <laughs> I'm Ken Gill, Director of Public Works and City Engineer, and we're here to talk about anything public works. And unfortunately, we have three Aggies here, so you'll have to bear <laughs> with us a little bit. So... <laughs> Back to Ashley, who is also an Aggie, and so is AJ. Yeah. Correct. So we're not here to talk about public, or just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> but we wanted to start by talking about and addressing the elephant in the room, and that is the fact that we are all gung-ho Aggies. So we were just chit-chatting a little bit before the interview started, and so we were just going to share that with you guys, that we're uh, kind of predicting how the next football season is going to be for A&M. We could talk about other teams, I guess. No, but we're going to focus on A&M. Yeah, right now. we'll focus. Focus on that. That's that's so important. So tell us what y'all were saying. You, you guys we'll, had some. We'll good just focus on the going. positive that's happening in football around Texas. You know, and that would be Texas A&M having the number one recruiting class. Of course, that's uh, a good thing. And the other good part, the other fun thing, is in a couple of years, will all the Texas teams will be reunited into oh, one conference? Ooh, that's yes. going to be good. That uh, will bring back a lot, a lot of, of traditions and a lot memories. Of the our rivalry. song will make sense now. Oh, yeah. It doesn't make any <laughs> sense true. to anybody. That's true. That's yeah. true. <laughs> I don't think, yeah, nobody understands took, it in the no. SEC. I took my husband for the first time to his first um, A&M game. I think I just lied. I think he went one time without me. But we'll say that he <laughs> went with me for the first time. And uh, he's like, why do we sing this song? We're not even playing TU. And it's UT, not TU. Yeah. And I'm like, you, and you why are we swaying back and forth? It doesn't matter. Take you're Auburn Alabama. and Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. We'll anyway, <laughs> the reason we're here is to talk about public works, which is really a crucial part of what the city services provide to the public. And so Ken Gill's been doing an awesome job at that. He's been here for how long? 30 years. Enough said there. That's a lot of in industry, professional, um, in, uh, organizational experience and knowledge that he's bringing to the services. And so um, kick us off, Ken, if you will by just giving us a quick snapshot of what does public works entail? Pub public works is kind of a general type thing mm -hmm. in this fact that I'd, I'd like to take it as things that the citizens, we want them to take for granted. In other words, when you get up in the morning and you go brush your teeth, you take for granted that the, that the water comes on. Right. Go to the restroom, you take for granted it flushes. Mm -hmm. you, you go outside, you get on the street, you go to work, streets are good, you get to work. All the lights, street lights work. All the signals work. You park your car, you're done. You just touched on everything public works does. If it's raining, the roads are draining. So it's it's literally everything you do every day that you just take for granted. Yep. But it's important in your life. When one of those things is missing or something goes wrong, it will mess up a day. Right. So true. So you guys have a crucial job. One of them is drainage, right? Yes. So ensuring that that's running efficiently and smoothly. You guys just embarked on a master plan. So tell us about that progress. The master plan, what we've done is we had a master drainage plan done in 1999. We updated it, which gives us everything back in 99 was done in paper. And it was on an old compact computer, for those of you, if you remember those. <laughs> and Do you remember that, AJ? I, we, I do. Like we, floppy disks and stuff like that? <laughs> pretty clear. Yes. Cass, cassette <laughs> tapes. Like, no, cassette yeah, tapes. That's how old it was. <laughs> so we brought it to where we were able to put it on our GIS mm -hmm. so that the public can look at it. We can look at it so much simpler. We don't have to pull out all the maps by hand and start digging through and saying, you know, which downstream project do we need to do first? Which, right. How expensive is it? It was all digitized. That was a big effort. GIS, meaning Geographic Information, information Systems. Systems. Okay. It's all on computer mapping. It's right. like your Google Maps. Yep. So we got it all on that. We updated the costs of it because mm -hmm. 99 to 2022 is a lot different. Sure. Mm -hmm. Also looked at some of the criteria. You know, things have changed. We've got more rain events. We've mm -hmm. got different storm. You know, we, we talked about 
that there's a new storm precipitation thing that's called Atlas. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the new precipitation data that's coming in across the country. It's changing. Whether people like it or not, the precipitation has increased in intensities. So we looked at that. How does that affect our drainage system? Then we came up with some costs of and priorities of what's important. And we know we've got to clean out the storm sewer system. Mm -hmm. That hasn't been cleaned far as I know, since I've been here, we've never really right. taken a big step towards that. We looked at, you know, what's it going to cost? How many miles of storm sewer lines do we have? What's critical and how to move in that direction, cleaning out your open ditches that you may have. And again, even the bigger ones, the, the outfalls, costs on those projects. And then another critical part, which is really essential to Victoria and the growth is look at those areas in town that are undeveloped. In the middle of town, you'll be driving through and you'll be going, wow, this is a huge piece of property. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of those properties aren't developed because there's no way to get the water out. So part of that plan was to look at those large tracts of undeveloped property inside the city, Mm -hmm. how to get outfalls to them, how to get those to drain so we got a master plan. So as developers come in, we got an idea to show them, hey, this is what needs to happen. Right. So uh, what's the timeline of this project or this master plan? The master when plan the is complete. Steps? It's okay. it's completed. Now is the next part is to implement some of those big projects, some of the, the outfall cleaning projects. Mm-hmm. That's through our CI Capital Improvements Program mm-hmm. to begin a program to start cleaning out the storm sewers cleaning out roadside ditches, which we're already doing now. In fact, we've already taken a proactive stance in cleaning out some of those up in Northcrest that, you know, it's been a long time since they've been cleaned out, but we're we're already starting. Awesome. So there's a lot of change happening lately at the city and the services that we provide to the public in a a positive direction for sure. And so we're reevaluating drainage. Now you mentioned it already, capital improvement projects is a big deal. So talk to us about that and your efforts to continue that. We, we're doing a lot a lot of projects that you may see that you've seen. Crestwood, for instance, mm-hmm. we're in phase two. It's a very uh, difficult project because one of the things that, you you know, as citizens drive by, why is it taking so long? Mm-hmm. Well, we're replacing the water lines. We're replacing the sanitary sewer lines, and we're upgrading the storm sewer. Right. All of that is underground work. Mm-hmm. That and, you don't see the progress being made necessarily. Right. Yeah. And we don't know really exactly what's underground it's an old street been there a long time so as we're digging and and saying okay this water line's going to go right there Mm -hmm. there's something already there there's a telephone line or there's another water line or something we yeah so it takes longer Mm -hmm. but those underground parts of a project take a lot longer and you're right you yeah. just don't see the problem. If you're going to do it, you might as well do it right. right. And, and that's, do what, it and that's the same purpose. thing with the duck pond, right? Tell yes. us about that. that Everyone one, wants to know about that. <laughs> that one I know is, about it, but I know you want to That one's a parks project, but we're, we're helping them with it. And that's mm-hmm. going to be excavating it out, cleaning it out, making it deeper. Right. So it doesn't just turn into, you know, a mud pit like it did in the <laughs> years past. Putting fountains in it to aerate that water, keep it flowing, keep mm-hmm. it fresh. And... I think the neatest thing is they're going to be doing some boardwalks on it, Mm -hmm. which is really a neat effect. It brings back the nature aspect of it and allows kids to get out there. They'll have a little fishing pier. It'll be deep Mm -hmm. enough to really stock some, you know, fish in there, I think. Right. That'll be cool. I can't wait to take my son. Yeah, I was going to say it's a beautiful spot to go for the family when you go to Riverside. And the families in Victoria are missing it. But tell us about, if you could real quick, I know it's a parks project, but it's still related to CIP because it's something you guys are involved in to that extent, about why it was even addressed in the first place. And then what we found out when we did look at it. Neat it project. We, we were going out there to address, as, as citizens remember, there was a lot of the sidewalk portions of it that would just, they were always underwater. Mm-hmm. And the sidewalks were sinking down. So we went out there not knowing what's underground again, Mm -hmm. is, hey, let's redo the sidewalks out there, fix some of them that are low, and fix some of the, you know, uh, the bridge going across because that was kind of messed up. And that wasn't letting that water go back and forth between both sides. Sure. Get in there. We're starting to tear out the sidewalk. And lo and behold, 
there is nothing holding that wall up. That little retaining wall that's right against the the duck pond in the sidewalk. Mm-hmm. We dug around and there's it was just hanging, just oh. literally just all by itself. <laughs> and we said we did we need to stop. We need to yeah. stop the project, so we stopped it. And the contractor didn't put anything in. He we pulled that contract out. Mm-hmm. That's how we got to this point of it's more than just replacing some right. sidewalks. Which this obviously thing is safety. adds a yeah. longer timeline, yes. you know, to get the right contractors involved and, and the right plan in place. And, and here we are. Yeah. Sometimes when you're digging deeper, you figure out there's a little bit more yes. problems. More and, to the story. and then at that time is, hey, let's really, you know, instead of just making a maintenance project, since we're going to have to redo, tear it all out, let's enhance that. Mm-hmm. that Take yeah. While we're at it. Yes, that citizen involvement. Get yes. get it to where it's going to be something right. that the citizens can be proud of and awesome. look at for years. Very cool. Perfect. Well, obviously, a duck pond is is a big part I, of I, what they want to know yeah. about. But I already know Ken's favorite subject that people want to know about: potholes. Oh, yes. We don't That's have your any. Favorite. <laughs> <laughs> we we don't. There's, yeah, this, right? oh. there's a smooth road anywhere you go in Victoria. That's why this that, place is amazing. It, it, potholes uh, in, in general. It's a struggle everywhere. It is. It, we were talking about a, that last week. It doesn't Every matter where. Every community has its potholes yeah. and bad yes. streets. And we've addressed it We years back, not too long ago, maybe three years ago. We had one one pothole truck, and we, we're up to three now. And awesome. what we're being able to do mm-hmm. is, yes, we take the calls from the citizens, mm-hmm. and we go out and address those within the 48 hours. That's our goal. Right. The other truck, the third truck, proactive. Awesome. They'll hit a zone. We yep. have seven zones, seven, eight zones. They go hit a zone, and they'll start just going down the streets and fixing the potholes. Now, I know the citizens are saying, you know, I got a street that's got a million potholes. <laughs> that's true. Those streets, you know, they're almost beyond even doing potholes, but we're still doing it. But those are the ones that we want to address with CIP projects. Talk to us more more. about that. Yeah, shift to the the goals of the CIP projects, specifically as it relates to streets. Yes. Because I know city manager has talked about it. You have talked about it at council presentations. That our goal, what was it, 25% of the worst roads in Victoria is Mm. what we want to address. And that's, and how we, starting off, how we started that is we, 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 in the past, we had a uh, street inventory, we Mm -hmm. call it. And we would go out and grade the roads, and we did that through interns. A couple of years ago, we went out and hired a company that actually has a more scientific approach. They go out mm-hmm. and take, you know, millions of pictures of it. Mm-hmm. They even did some subsurface analysis, to nice. do, you know, some some sonic measurements to determine how sound is that road. And then they came up with a a uh, processed a PCI score, pavement condition index, and they look at how to cost optimize. Because what's critical is you just don't want to chase after the bad bad roads all the time. Mm-hmm. Because if you chase those, you got a road that's in pretty good shape. <laughs> you don't want and that that's going to get turn just as into bad. a bad road. Right. Mm-hmm. So this looked at optimizing. Awesome. And doing a you know yes, we're still going to fix some of the worst roads, but we're also going to attack some of these roads that are in good shape. Update that maintenance. Put a little bit more. You know overlays in them, strengthen them up, right. reduce that that wear and tear on your vehicle. Yeah. Good example, Airline Road. Mm. Okay, everybody knows Airline Road between Navarro and Laurent, right in front of the old movie shop, mm-hmm. is horrible. Well, part of the reason it's horrible is there's a 16-inch water main that kept breaking. Really? And when a 16-inch water main breaks, it's massive. So... Part of the CIP was, let's fix the water line. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and mill and overlay that road so that when we're done with the water line, no more breaks. Now we got a good smooth road that's going to last another 20, 30 years. Yeah. Well, I love that example that you just gave because you're looking at fixing roads while balancing ones that are, you know, kind of bad, yes. but, you know, not ones terrible. Ones that don't need speed limits pretty right. much because well, you got to slow, go, anyway. slow down anyway. Because you slow down anyway. But not just that, but finding another reason why you would want to renovate it yes. so that you're not wasting taxpayer dollars. You're making most efficient use of the yes. funding. We're looking at, at, when we look at a project, we don't want to mm-hmm. just look at, and, and I know some of the citizens think that, but for 30 years, we 
always look at what's under that rug. Yeah. We don't want to go out there and do what, you know, long time ago <laughs> is they go fix the road and then a utility company would come by and tear it up. Oof, and you're yeah. like, really? Where, don't you guys talk? <laughs> so we're one unit where we all talk together. We're not going to let that happen. So yeah. we go out there, we look at the road. We look at underneath. Is the water line in good shape? Is the sewer line in good shape? If it is, we can just do the road. Awesome. And yeah. a lot of these neat projects that are coming out, and I'm, I'm really excited about them, is the mill and overlays of the Mockingbirds, the Stock Bowers, uh, street, Airline Road. Awesome. Those streets are really in good shape. Mm -hmm. They just need a little bit heavier and, you know, I call it tender loving care. Right. And we'll have those streets drivable, really drivable, really smooth, really good. And we don't have to spend the $17, 20000000 million to rebuild it if right. we just let yeah. it go. Mm -hmm. So how many, tell me, hopefully you know this, miles of streets? 326 right? miles. So that's like us driving from here to like Dallas, wow. right? Up to Denton. Yeah, I was going to say a little bit further. I don't know about It's up to Denton. Miles, yeah. Denton. Just imagine Denton. driving up 77 all the way to Denton. That's how many miles of That's how many of miles. And that doesn't you include, guys have to right. attend to. That's just that doesn't include lane miles. Because it remember, wow. yeah, cuz you might separating. have four lanes or five lanes on oh. Stock Bauer. So to keep you take lane miles it, it gets even more and more. So I've taken it's a road a trip then before because I know there's been a few times where I've just driven around Victoria. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Plenty of times. It's a long, <laughs> I mean, it is a long ways, but I, I think we're blessed here. Mm -hmm. And I, I kind of, I'll jump to traffic because we do traffic too. Yeah. Is, you know, we have about 100 traffic signals and mm -hmm. we maintain all of those with a very tight staff. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting when you say, you know, yeah, this traffic light's not working, it's delayed or whatever. And then I think I grew up in Houston, and if you didn't sit through two, three cycles, hey, you you, you yeah. were on a lucky day yeah. or it's two in the morning. Right. And we're blessed in that our systems are all tied together. Yes, they drift a little bit. Sometimes mm -hmm. we get out there and reset the clocks. But this town is small enough where you can get from one end to the other with our good roads, and it's it's a unified committee. Mm -hmm. community and that's kind of where I was going with that is yeah. is thank goodness we're not Dallas or <laughs> Houston that has I don't even want to know how many miles of streets yeah. I have yeah it took me I think 45 minutes I always planned when I lived in uh, Arlington I always planned 45 minutes to get in anywhere yeah. anywhere anywhere here and I came back to visit and I had to take my little brother to a uh, doctor's appointment and I was ready to leave 45 minutes before <laughs> and he said what are you doing it only takes like 10 15 minutes to yeah. get on the other yeah. side of town <laughs> So I yeah I appreciate the fact of Victoria yeah. not having such crazy traffic. Yes, agree, totally agree. Well, so you mentioned you know all the different areas of what you currently manage. Um, the other thing that I wanted us to wrap up with, obviously, is water. Yes, talk to us about that. Our water system. We are surface <laughs> water plant. Mm -hmm. We run surface water, and we run average about ten million gallons, which is if it's a lot of gallons, mm -hmm. and. I try. I remember I did that in a in a kind of back to track it. It's like taking a tanker truck that you know delivers gasoline mm -hmm. and lining those all the way just up to like quite, uh, nursery, mm. one after the other. That's how much water we use every day. It's wow. it's a lot every day. Every day. That's yeah. on average. In the summer, it's fourteen, you know, million gallons. Right. But we have a great system. We have good water. Mm -hmm. We always meet compliances and. We've been able to, you know, this last went cold snap we had, mm -hmm. everything was good. We had everything full. And I do want to tell the citizens while I'm here, thank you guys for listening to us when we say don't just turn your taps on, you know, be conservative, use that drip method and just drip one faucet. Right. Winter storm is what they were calling it. It was no winter storm compared to <laughs> no. winter storm Yuri. No. Yeah. But winter storm Glenda? Linda. Ooh. Landon. 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 That's right. They do we'll name see, them now. But that's, name that, that's was how the that was how noticeable. severe it wasn't. We right. couldn't even remember the we name. We couldn't <laughs> even remember the name. But that's what Ken is talking about. Thank you. During winter storm Landon. Yes. That you did not did, run yes. your faucets. We were in, we really maintained the system. It did right. go up a little bit more. 
but it wasn't anything like that one year. I, and I think the citizens, about that. Yeah. the citizens are prepared more. Yep. Mm-hmm. And they're listening to us more. Mm-hmm. And and we want to help. You mm-hmm. know, if it comes down where we do get, hopefully we don't, another hard, hard freeze is we're out there to help. If if you want your water turned off in advance or something, we had some a lot of apartment complexes that, that went ahead and took that step themselves. Yeah. I they notified their uh, mm-hmm. tenants hey, we're turning the water off at 9, 10 o'clock, and we're right. not going to turn it back on till 7. That <clears throat> was incredible. Well, so a lot of people might be hearing this and thinking, what does that even mean for <laughs> me? Like, why, why would they do that? Talk to us, maybe even yeah. referencing Winter Storm Uri, about why that's important yeah. and what happened as a consequence yes. during Winter Storm in, Uri. In Uri, what's, what really broke those lines and what's different from here versus, I'll say, the north part of the United States sure. is... Our houses are built different. Mm-hmm. They insulate their houses different. They have insulation between the walls. A lot of these houses don't. A lot of the lines are just up against that outside wall, that water line. So when that wind hit, it, it can freeze that line. Yes, dripping does help. It keeps that water out. But what I read through the experts is once your line freezes, there's really not much you can do. Mm. And what they tell you is keep that water, turn it off. Let the lines thaw out first because what happens when you, if you start dripping and and it starts dripping a little bit and you turn it on full, well, you've got that piece of ice in your line somewhere and it's going to push through and then Mm -hmm. it's going to hit a a 90 or a little bend in your line and then Mm -hmm. that's where your line breaks. So you say, let it, just let it thaw out. And Mm -hmm. another big one, I've got to keep going. No, please do. The, it's, it's wrapping your outside faucets. Mm Mm-hmm. I think that's another one a lot of people don't do. You can get those little styrofoam faucet covers or two dollars and fifty cents. Yeah. Yeah. You know, things like that. It's taking those precautions, you know, watching your water system, watching your water lines, but running the faucet only hurts collectively everybody because right. we were running our, our plant can run twenty two million gallons a day mm-hmm. during that peak when everything was was breaking free. It was 30 million gallons. So because people were running their faucets, running they their were faucets, running they way had, more. No, wow. And it, a lot of people had water breaks. Taxing our water pressure they taxed, system, yeah. yes, right? They taxed it. But again, Crazy. if you see a leak, be pretty proactive. Mm-hmm. If you have a leak, call us. That's the thing. You know, when we have these big storms, yeah. we know one's coming. We're going to have extra staff available mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. go out and we can turn At the water. No additional no charge. charge. Yeah. During, those, during those events, we want to be proactive. Right. We want to help you. Help the citizens. Speaking yeah. of, what's that telephone number they can call? 361-485-3380. Nice. I'm assuming the graphic's going to go. I would say <laughs> that the PSA video, the public service announcement video that we did, was mm-hmm. very helpful. I yes, know, like for I, a lot, I, a lot I of people. I believe a lot of people listen yeah. to it. The yeah. Facebook, putting it, getting that out on mm. Facebook yes. is great because that's just, where people are at. Yeah, right. and I learned. Sure. I honestly learned a lot while it was being while played we and while we were it, filming yeah. it. Uh, such as the rear fountain, uh, rear faucet being, yes. or the furthest faucet, furthest away from, faucet the meter. from the meter, which in your meters yeah. generally in the front, you know, Just never on the think of that. Right. Yeah. Little That's thing. the one that you're supposed to drip. Yes. Mm-hmm. Drip. Yes. I said and drip, yeah. not drip. Open, open the cabinets. That too. You know, That's very open simple. Open your cabinets, your kitchen cabinet. My mom used to do that in Houston. It was on the outside wall. She'd open up the cabinet. She'd put a, a heat lamp in it or a, basically a work light. So random. So and why just, do you have to do that? I've because heard it too, heat, but because that's where that that water is coming in is from your usually it's coming in through your bathroom mm-hmm. or uh, your kitchen mm-hmm. and you want to keep that hot you want to keep that warm and you want to keep it warm for two things water and if your sewer lines freeze <laughs> up which can happen and it just allows that that extra safety factor that if that's warm then the lines coming further into your house. They're going to be warm, too. Gotcha. Makes total sense. And keep your house warm. Lots of lessons learned yes. from yep. Winter Storm Uri. But, so reassure us once again of some of the ways that you guys in your department have maybe proactively thought about future if we ever get a hard winter storm like what, that, what you yes, guys are we, going to do. We've done some things a little bit different. We've winterized mm-hmm. our water system, mm-hmm. and that means our gauges are winterized, our lines that, that show what our, our – you know, elevations are in the water towers. We've winterized those, put some wintering tape on them, heat tape. 
uh, that helps us where we don't have to go out there and check it. We know what's going on, how right. much water is in that water mm -hmm. tower. We keep our water plant full. And we, we've got two basins that we run, and we'll keep both of them full. When we see an event coming, we open them both up. We, they're always running, but what's crazy is that February is the best time to take one of those basins down to clean it and give it some maintenance because it's the lowest time of water usage. Mm -hmm. It's also the time when we can get that winter freeze. Mm -hmm. So we know we've got, we look at the weather and say, do we have about a week, two week window? Okay, let's take that, let's right. take that basin down. Well, speaking of water supply, so there's a difference, right? Between water supply and water pressure. And so just real quick, I think for the public's sake, we didn't have a water supply issue during Winter Storm Uri. It was the water pressure what, that was the issue. I it, think because Hurricane it was Harvey, both. it was a little. I'll, I'll be little honest on Uri. It was a little both. Sure. We we were actually could not make water fast enough because which, of the pressure. Because okay. of the pressure. Yeah. Okay. And what's interesting is when you think Victoria, we have two pressure planes. We have a north pressure plane and a south pressure plane, and the north pressure plane you know, is Mockingbird Airline north, and then the south is all of that south. Mm -hmm. Well, the north pressure plane is on a different pumping system, and it's coming straight from the plant. And they, they were, they were, they had water, but it was, you know, pretty low, low pressure. Mm -hmm. South is the one we couldn't feed it fast enough. That's where all the brakes were. A lot of the older homes. Mm. That makes sense. Yeah. Once you get below 20 pounds of pressure, that's where you have to issue that boil water notice. Mm -hmm. And we lost that pressure. Right. Now, what's interesting is if you're at the top of that pressure plane, which you're up around Airline and Mockingbird, man, you lost water. It was like gone. Well, if you live on, you know, say Pleasant Green, I'm like, man, I still got water. It's kind of low pressure, but I, they, they really did have water right. because Victoria is tilted oh. that way. Wow. So they had water <laughs> by gravity for a time because we couldn't feed it fast enough, but they were still getting water fed by gravity. <laughs> so they, some of them never really ran out of water. That it was kind of just crazy to look back. You and look at see different scenarios and you're like, crazy. Storm for, yeah. I mean, it really was. But it wasn't just us no. who experienced this. This was nationwide. This yeah, was Texas, Texas wide. wide. Texas, yeah, Texas it, wide. Um, Texas wide. And everyone had this issue. Even boil water notices were issued across the state of across Texas. Across the state, or majority communities actually. But it's something we weren't had boil water. You know, notices. really expecting here in Texas, you don't yeah. have things of that. That's exactly right. You know that right. weather type. No, so you that can't up north. Go and say, oh, this city did yeah. a terrible job. And they did everything they could and given will, the circumstances and the planning. Like Ken said, the houses that are built here are meant to be built for our climate, right? And to adapt for our climate. Versus and I want to say our our our. Public Works Department, the mm. guys out in the field did a spectacular Agreed. job. Oh, yeah. They they got our water system up in, in three days back to which off is the boil half water. Yeah. Which the amount is, of time, I will tell you, Ken, half the amount of time. I read an article on average that other communities were able to get their boil water notices rescinded. It was about a week. Yes. Or we, longer. We were three days. As soon as we got that yep. water back into the system, we went out. You have to take, we had to take 55 tests, mm -hmm. and they all have to pass. And went out and took them all. They all passed. Operators took the test. They did them all perfect. It was great. I, I commend. And that's everybody. We had streets helping. Of course, our utilities, awesome. water and sewer division was helping. Yep. Utility billing, engine. All our public works was helping in addition to y'all. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and even our HR division. Everybody pulled together during that storm. So right. it was great. It was cool. It was really neat to see that camaraderie. Even within the community, yes, people providing potable water where they could, mm -hmm. and um, you know, just banding together to try and get the and being patient. Yeah. Being That's patient. what I want to tell the citizens. Yeah. That, you know, we always thank y'all for your patience mm -hmm. because it does take that sometimes. But it's again goes back to that. Take it for granted until yeah. it's gone. Yeah, and wow, That's true. Then you realize, man, I do rely on this service. I do rely mm -hmm. on these things. You know, you got the electric company fighting the same battles that we do. When right. electricity goes out, it's like, w what happened? Yep. I'm sure Office of Emergency Management here in Victoria will appreciate this plug, but it's always good to come prepared and have a plan. Yes. And yes. this is definitely one of those situations where you come out thinking, 
should have a plan next yes. time. Oh, yeah. I was for ready for going like full survival mode. I was telling my wife, we need mm-hmm. to learn how to camp. We need to learn how to do everything <laughs> There right you now. go. <laughs> yeah. That's it. But, but ex- exactly like you said, the hard work of your workers, mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure they more than anyone wanted the water on as well, oh, too. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. They, they, they live in the same home. city. <laughs> exactly. Right. That's so. so true. Well, you know, we talked about Winter Storm Era. You talked about what all public works is. Is there anything else, Ken, that you would like our public to know about? that maybe we haven't touched on? Not really. I just, again, thanks for their patience. Uh, Mm -hmm. Knowing that we are moving in the right direction when you're driving on some of these streets, Mm -hmm. you know, take a look at at streets like Sam Houston and Laurent. Right. Uh, You know, that's a heck of a, if you think back and you were here when Sam Houston was the shape (laughs) it was in, you'd be like, wow, it's way better. I mean, and, you know, we are making progress. It's mm-hmm. just baby steps. It's interesting to know that you take a yardstick and lay it out on the street and make a square out of it, $100 plus. $100 for that little yardstick square. And then look up and down your street and go, how many yardstick squares is that going to cost? Yep. And it's just expensive. Mm-hmm. It is just so expensive. And that's just street. Right. Yeah, but- yeah, I was going to say there's other aspects to pay for yeah, as well. Yes, you know? yes. They can't operate a city just uh, focusing on putting all the funding towards streets. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of other things that have to be tended <laughs> right. to, including public safety, for example. But that's just one big picture that our city manager and council well, the public, are prioritizing. You know, our police chief thinks that we take all the money, so I, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll talk we to do. chief about that. I don't know. <laughs> we'll make sure to talk to him. But thank you so much, Ken, for, for being here. This was a lot of good information. Hope you guys feel more informed informed i certainly do every time i, I talk with you so all right thanks again thank but you if you guys want to get more information about public works and what all they're up to ken tell us what phone number and website they can go to it's my email my our website is city of victoria go to public works in the in the website and then our phone number is the same one 361-485-3380 and that'll get to public works and they can distribute amongst who it needs to be. But that's our phone number. Perfect. And obviously you can follow us on the city's Facebook page, our weekly city newsletter, and these town talk programs. Yes. Which come on local cable channels 15 and 115. And those come out every other month. So we hope that you guys stay connected with us. We also post them to our Facebook page and our YouTube channel, which is Victoria, Texas Videos. So Ken, once thank again, you. I want to thank you for thank your time you and all the work that you do. Yes. And AJ, my handy dandy. I had fun. New. I'm glad I was here. Co-host for the day. Yeah. I'm glad you were yeah, here. Yeah, we're 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 hooking up a lot more now that yeah. we, you know. Yeah, I think the Aggie connection camaraderie here. Yeah. Next show we'll watch the game. <laughs> That's it. That's all we're gonna do. Yeah. We'll provide commentary. Yeah. Commentary. I, I like that. That'd be fun. We'll, you know, kinda like the Mannings. I'm actually not yeah, exactly. Shane, you wanna hook us up with that creative thought? All right, guys. Well, thanks again for tuning in. And like I said, keep up with us on local cable channels 15 and 115. Follow us on Facebook and we'll see you next time. Have a great rest of your day. Gig them. (laughs) I love it. I cannot read that fast. (laughs) You were killing me. I was like, so do you want me? Because this one, I'm going to kind of wing it. Do I need to read that thing again? You good? No, I can't read. Can't read squat. You're running the show, not me. Yeah, y'all trying to back me up off the curb. I know the game. That's just a different version. Yeah. Start over.